Evan, what's up, my man? How you been? What's up, champ? How you been? <laughs> I've been all right, man. I can't complain. What are you? What, what? I know. I know you're a busy guy. No, I'm not that busy. I'm not that busy. I wonder what what do you do on, on, on as on, other than bodybuilding? I don't know you sitting there with a shirt and a tie on. <laughs> what else you do? Uh, well, I, I haven't said a whole lot about it lately, but um, I, I started working with a team of guys, and basically what we do is you know financial advising, planning. So it's it's a really large firm, right? Located throughout Connecticut, New York, Massachusetts. Um, probably about 800 advisors firm wide, but, uh, I work on a team of guys. It's only six of us. And one of them is a longtime friend of mine uh -huh. and also somebody who kind of handled all my stuff for the last 10 plus years. So, um, it's cool, man. It's basically anything and everything pertaining to financial planning, right? So that could mean a lot of different things for different people, you know, for someone who is young, maybe just starting a family, it could mean, you know, protection with a life insurance type product. Uh, as you're going on, you're making money. It could mean setting up, you know, things for retirement. So, are you it's, are it's, you it's, just are you just working for people in your area, or are you working nationwide? No, no, nationwide. So I could actually call you and ask for some advice. Yeah, of course. Wow, because I'm just going through this at the moment. Because you know, I mean, see, look at that. Yeah. Not, so, you know, it's stuff that everybody needs at, at, at one point or another. Um, it's something you need. And a lot of the people, unfortunately, probably don't put enough time into doing the planning that they yeah. should. How long have you been doing it, though? It's so about a year now. Okay. My friends, you know, the other guys, you know, one of the guys on the team has been doing it 40 years. Uh, my friend's been in the business 20 years. So, you know me, I would never claim to be an expert on something that I'm not. So for the things that I'm not as versed on, I just lean on them or bring them into it. You know, right. Things like that. But, yeah. it's, it's so hard because, you know, because, of course, money in the bank don't mean shit anymore. You know, and everybody's been telling me the same thing. I said, you know what, you need to start, you know. Uh, uh, getting some advice, you know. So, and I, the, for the first time in my life, actually, just a couple of days ago, I went to uh, to a firm to sit down with them, and then, uh, you know, I didn't even know this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is to sit down with them, and because I've never talked to anybody about any financial investments and stuff like that, and so they basically told me, you know, they do stocks and and, and everything. So, but it's so hard to give someone money that you don't even know. Of course. No. And that's the thing, right? It's a lot of it. You're in the trust business, right? It's the business of trust. So right. you need to be working with people that, you know, you, 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 you resonate with, right? You, you believe uh, that you have a sim similar value system um, and that they've really taken the time to understand you yeah. right and your goals and how you feel about things your risk tolerance um i tell you what i'm looking for what's that i'm looking for a risk-free <laughs> investment that pays dividends that exists yeah that's what i'm looking for that that, that exists all right. Well, definitely, I'm definitely going to call you after this podcast. We'll get I have oh, to have a conversation fine. because I'm really looking into something. Because right now, I think it's a good time because the market just crashing. Right. This, it's, do you guys do yeah, stocks? Do you guys do stocks too, or just just uh, yeah, 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 mutual course. mutual funds and all that? Everything. Yep. And you know, look, there's there's something for everyone. There's some people that are very much risk averse, right? They they yeah. don't. They're not they're not looking to play too much with their money, but there's things that they could do, you know, with guaranteed accumulation. Um, you know, maybe you're not going to outperform the market, um, but there's there's something for everybody. There's something that fits everyone's. Yeah. Uh, you know, everyone's time horizon, everyone's risk profile. Uh, and, it, and it's something that, you know, I'm, I'm sure. How, how old are you, Dennis? Fifty six in two months. 56. I mean, imagine if you had done this at 26. Well, yeah, it's too late. <laughs> no, 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 not too late. No. I know, but it's, too, yeah, but I can't turn back the time. And I know at 26, I didn't have nothing. Right. But well, as you know, there was, there was probably somewhere along the way, and, and this is what happens. This happens for everybody. You're in your 20s. You're trying to get there. You're trying to start making money. 
somewhere in your 30s, you're probably making money, but time is flying. And then all of a sudden, you're in your 40s, you're in your 50s, and you go, I had oh people. God. I had people telling me this for year. I mean, for for, for twenty years to so say you should invest. I just don't. I never understood how this works. And I figured, because I see when the market crashed with people jumping off of buildings and shit. I said, I'm not going to be that one. <laughs> I said, I won't be that guy. So I said, when you're working, when you're working with the right people, you know, it, it doesn't have to be that way. So right. If you can start young, start thinking about it. Um, and because, you know, you said it, man, we don't learn about these things. Mm. It's not like they teach you about this in school. And um, all of a sudden you find yourself halfway through life and you say, geez, am I going to be in a position to live the kind of life I want to live or to be able to retire? So it's one of those things, man, where if you have someone who you can trust, mm. uh, someone with the expertise to just have the conversation, get thinking about things. Um, because you just you don't want to find yourself too far along and say, oh, my God, I can't make up for lost time. Right. Right. Um, Good. Well, I'll definitely get back to you on that because I because I, I like I said, I, I, I saw someone and I explained it to a friend of mine who's been doing this for a while. And uh, she said, get a second opinion because she wasn't too happy about the deal that they made me somewhat. So you know, and there's there's people who I, I talk to all the time and they're already working with an advisor. I said, listen, nothing wrong with getting a second opinion. Right. And if we look and everything you're doing is great, no problem. I'm right. not trying to sell anybody something that they don't need. Right, exactly, exactly. For, for that, I'm getting back to you. Let me talk to Evan sent upon the bodybuilder for a second. Uh, That's what I'm really interested in. Are you retired, bro? Um, I mean, not officially, but to be totally honest, you know, I have some injuries that I've accumulated over the years and over the last, really the last year, it's kind of prevented me from training the way that I would need to train in order to be competitive. I see some videos though that if you're back in training though, what's up with that? I mean, I'm listen. I, I'm always training, at least so far. I, I don't feel ready to give it up. Um, it's been a part of my life for so long. Uh, that it's kind of hardwired, right? It's just part mm. of my routine. It's part of my regimen. Um, but you don't you don't want to make the announcement, so you're not 100 percent sure. <laughs> I'm not 100 percent sure because I don't know exactly what the injuries entail, mm. okay, or if they could be corrected. If they could be corrected, I have to be totally honest with you. I feel that I have gas left in the tank and I, I wouldn't mind getting on stage again mm. um you took i don't a, know you took I guess a, I, just, you, I just don't know you took a long break i mean a long break you haven't competed since 2016. yeah you know when i when i injured my knee that yeah. took a long time yeah. you know to, to to get over now now it's it's 100 back, back to normal totally back to normal but now i now i have other problems yeah <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you, you're not even 40 yet, are you? No, uh, next month. Oh, so you, okay, so you're just about hitting 40. Yeah, but 40, 40 today is like, it's like 25, 20 years ago. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're proof of that. Yeah, now, Dexter, there's a lot of, almost, when you look at the top 10, there's, a, there's about six guys in their mid 40s. <laughs> so, so you can't really, Dennis, when when you when we when we competed in New York, New York together, how old were you? And that was uh, we competed. That was your first pro show. My first. Pro where show. you kicked everybody's ass. Uh, that was that was two thousand nine. I was forty three. See, that's amazing. Because yeah. look at how how good you looked. Yeah, I was forty three. That's you know? amazing. Yeah, and the next year, the year after, I retired, two thousand ten, because yeah. it was you know when you when you know at the point when you're at the point where you can tell that you're not getting better. You have a hard time staying where you are and you you can see things are getting a little bit worse. I said, yeah. this is the time to go, you know? But in your case- it's a, tough, it's a tough thing to come to terms with. Yeah, but in your case, cause when I look at your, when I look at your contest history, I had no idea you only did three amateur shows. Yeah. That was the uh, uh, 2006 four. At four. I mean, they only listed three. There was Atlantic City in 2006. Then the Nationals in 2006, and then again the Nationals in 2007. 
Yeah, so wait a minute. I did I did the Atlantic States in 2005. Oh, so 2005, that's the fourth show then. Yeah, uh, 2006, I did the Junior Nationals and I won. Then I did the Nationals in 2006 and took second place and then came back in 2007 and won the and Nationals. Won the, and won the overall, yes. Okay. And then you came into the New York Pro two years later and I was pissed, man, that day. Yeah. You know, and not because you won. Not as pissed as Marcus. No, no, I, yeah, no, I wasn't that. No, I was not pissed at, at you winning. I was pissed at how this how this came about because I don't know what happened. Maybe you can you can shed some light on this. What happened? That all of a sudden you were the last one to come out on stage, dude. <laughs> it's like listen, wait, wait a minute. What happened? Listen, you're saying it at night. I, uh, yes, of course. Not at night. If for, I think for prejudging too, wasn't it for prejudging too? Something happened at night for you to come out last. At night, listen, man. I was backstage and like I'm trying to fix my tan, and I'm I'm off in this like janitor's closet, right? Mm. And time's going by, and I'm like, you know, I'm letting my tan dry, and I'm like, I better go out and see where everything is at. And I step outside, and everyone's like. Where have you been? The show is almost over. And I'm like, oh my God, They're like we've been calling your name. So I go out on stage and I guess like come to find out they had been like making announcements. Like if you if you know where Evan is, get him out on stage. I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Aging it, Evan Centipani. And I guess, I mean, I almost like missed the night show. For, I think for, for, for us athletes, it looked almost like it was scripted. <laughs> People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. It's like <laughs> no. It's like he's getting no. a special treatment. So it was no. it wasn't even like that. No, they couldn't find me because yeah. I was in this like, closet working on my fucking tan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um okay. yeah. I, w when I when I walked out of the closet, I realized I had almost missed the night show. No, they were looking for me. No one could find me. Yeah. Yeah, and I know Marcus was pissed. Yeah. I know I wasn't mad at you winning because at the end of the day, I was like, listen. You know, it's apples and oranges. What can you say? Dude, Marcus was pissed and like for years, even just the other day, somebody was like talking shit on the line. They're like, 2009, you sucked. The market kicked your ass. <laughs> it's, it's, well, it, it, you can win. You can win shows left and right. And, you know, look, look at Phil. He won seven Olympias and he got so much shit for winning, right, right, right. you know, at the end of the day. So, so, right. let, so let's go back. So, so your, your pro career lasted over seven years. You know, and you're not, you didn't do a lot of shows. So you picked your shows carefully, I guess. So what was the reason for you just, you know, saying, nah, I'm not doing all these shows. I'm just picking some shows. I was always so intent on, you know, trying to take the time in the gym to get better. And, um, you know, because early on in my career, that's how I had success was, I mean, probably from the time I was 18, I had people telling me, oh, you should compete. You should compete. And I said, oh, you know, I don't feel that I'm ready. And. You know, I took the time in the gym and, you know, it was like one big off season. But then when I was finally ready to compete, I did, you know, I did really well in a short period of time. So in my mind, I felt like, OK, if I'm out there competing, I won't be making progress. So let me make sure I take enough time in the gym and between shows. In hindsight, I probably should have competed a little more often because I think I probably would improved more mm -hmm. if I was competing more. You know, you you know how it is. You compete, catch that rebound, get back out there. You learn um, you learn about yourself when you are, you know, from contest preps and, and peak weeks right. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Right. So in hindsight, I, I, I wish I was out there more often. I think I would have been better for it. But, you know, even when I look back in totality, I'm really, really grateful, you know, to have had a, a career, a, any career at all mm. in the sport and to have done well. And I mean, it, it enabled me to see the world 
uh, you know, I still have my relationship with Animal now after 15 years. I was just, I had that, I have a note there just regarding Animal because I wanted to talk to you about that too. You know, I mean, as I still feel like, you know, just yesterday I was a kid looking at muscle mag and flex and muscular development and just to, you know, have been on a cover or to be featured in those magazines or to compete against guys who were in magazines that I was looking at when I was just a kid. At any point, I always felt like, look, if it was over, if it ended, I'd still be very grateful um, for what I was able to achieve or to have been a part of it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Animal. You've been with Animal. You still sponsored with Animal right now? 15 yeah, we years. Yeah, photo shoots last week. That's got to be like an all-time record of any athlete. I think that's got to be a record. Yeah. And, and it's not just like, okay, you were, you know, associated with this brand and like, you know, it reached a point and they're just like giving you free supplements, like, like a real yeah. sponsorship, yeah. a real, real relationship. It's got to be a record. But that shows you how loyal they are too, because, you know, when you look at other companies and there's a few that are similar to Animal when it comes to sponsor athletes that don't even compete. But there you see the real loyalty. I mean, they see that you are loyal to them, and then uh, they are loyal back to you. I mean, where there, was there a time where you left them at one point? Do I remember it something? In, yeah, in 2014, <clears throat> I believe, um, it was the, the person who, who I was uh, dealing with, you know, on my contract, there was, you know, I guess without getting into a lot of the specifics right. of it, um, we hadn't come to an agreement. Uh, in hindsight, it, it was really unnecessarily so. Mm. But I was approached by somebody else who had made a deal, and um, you know, I, I decided to give it a try. It, it didn't. It didn't work, and, and it reinforced in my mind how important it is when you do business with somebody, mm. any kind of business, that you share a similar value system. Uh, that you're very much on the same page, uh, even even stylistically. Everybody has a different style, and you know your style very much has to align with the people that you're working with in in, in any field. Mm -hmm. um, and that relationship failed, um, but it served to reinforce that. And um, fortunately, you know, Animal and I were able to continue from there forward. I think for both of us, kind of with with a renewed appreciation mm. for each other yeah it's kind of like it's kind of like leaving your girlfriend for another girl and then realize that was a big mistake let me go back <laughs> 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 but that no but that's awesome because i you know you don't you don't see that too often you know you see a lot of guys changing sponsors and uh, and 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 they've been there since your beginning i guess 2006 i was never with anybody else yeah. i signed with them as an amateur um I, I was approached by a few other companies at the time, and some companies offered more money, but I just got a different feeling mm. um, in, in speaking with Animal, just kind of the way the company was run, the attitude, and I just felt better. Yeah. And even in my mind, even though at the time I was only 24 years old, I just felt like there was more of a potential maybe for a long-term relationship which is more what I would value. You know, mm -hmm. I, I never wanted to be one of those guys going from company to company and one minute you're, you're promoting this and then the next minute you're saying, no, no, this is the best thing, you know. Yeah, that just, I hear you, which is it's business, but it looks way better the way you do it and the way you guys, are, you know, were able to, to stick together. And, right. you know, and because, and, you know, <laughs> I see exactly what you're saying because... You know, I see people switch to another company and the next thing you know, and two days later, you'll post, you know, that's what got me where I'm at. And <laughs> you know. it's, it's no good for credibility, you know? Yeah, I, at, the, at the end, yeah. How about, um, um, what's his name was with them for a long time too? The guy from Canada, what was his name? Frank McGrath. Frank McGrath. Is he still with them? He's not. No, he moved on. Um, but yeah, he was there, I think, a year before I started. So 2005. But he was uh, there for a long time because I remember the picture of him standing somewhere with looking down with some, uh, um, uh, some, some uh, what was it, uh, boxing that uh, his hands were wrapped. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, that was. You know, there was so many good ads. Yeah. You know, Brian Moss took so many iconic images that really, I think, helped to kind of category, you know, um, characterize it. Really captured what the brand was about. And those those images, you know, they were the kind of things that you wanted to hang on your wall in your room yeah, or at the yeah. gym. And still to this day, it's some really uh, classic stuff that Brian, you know, in 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 partnership with Animal created. Mm. So the the company's still doing really well, huh? Doing really well, you know, kind of like everybody else, they've had to, you know, constantly look at what they're doing and reassess and. Uh, make decisions about you know how to handle it moving forward. So you know just like every any any other successful company, they're constantly evolving. Um, but they've 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 done a good job doing that, and they're mm. still doing very well. And a lot of people don't realize they're one of the longest standing companies. They've been in business since '77. I know them since I first picked up a magazine. First magazine I ever picked up. I don't remember which one it was. I remember Animal uh, ad was in there. Yeah, yeah. they've been around. Yeah. That's good. That's good to see, man, because that's, you know, that's that's where athletes want to be. You want to be in a company that's been around forever. And, and whereas, you know, a lot of companies and there's nothing wrong with utilizing another manufacturer. Um, but oh, I think a lot of times as consumers, people don't realize that, you know, not all brands produce their own products. Dude, I mean, Animal's got like a campus down there in New Jersey of like a dozen buildings, you know, manufacturing facilities. Mm office buildings so i mean they're a large outfit and you know for me I, it's really cool to see you know that they kind of they control the process from start to finish it's a very um a very official very legitimate mm. outfit that's awesome that's awesome good like i said i like the fact that they keep you on even though you're not competing i haven't competed since yeah. like almost going on going on six years um let me ask you this. You you had this, you said the knee injury. I thought it was a quad tear. Quad tendon. The quad tendon. Oh, okay. So that was the reason for you not, you know, competing from since 2016, right? How long did it take you to recover from that? Dude, you know, you're back in the gym and you're walking and things within like six months. But, dude, it is not the same. Like, yeah. I felt legitimate. Like, I couldn't do like a regular leg extension. For like two years, man. Wow. Like the pain was incredible. Oh, so you had um, so you had pain for that long? Pain, swelling. Um it, it it was messed up for a long time. So did you think you it's not you're never gonna be back to hundred percent? Yeah, I'm like it's never gonna feel the same again. And look, even truth be told, even to this day, if I'm walking down a set of stairs, I can still feel it more than the other side. So I don't know that it'll ever be just the the way they put you. They literally put you back together differently than you were before. Okay, so so what exactly happened? You tore the, the tendon completely so the tendon, off the bone. Yeah, the tendon that connects the quad to the kneecap ripped right off the knee. Right? How did you have an accident or? I was in my driveway and there was ice. Oh. Uh, and <laughs> when you start to slip, right? You ever start to slip and you you go to catch yourself. Well, you go from being in a state where, you know, you're basically relaxed and then full suddenly, force, full force. Yeah. Full force. The muscle contracts. Same thing happened to branch the exact same thing on ice. If you look up the injury, the number one way that it occurs is from slipping. Wow. Not because of, not because of the fall. It's not that the fall injures you. It's when you go to, catch yourself the muscle goes from being completely relaxed and unloaded to but, contracted but can, with full force but can this also happen to a, a healthy tendon or was it the tendon a little bit brittle or i don't know i mean it, it happens to people who you know regular people who have, yeah. you know they haven't been weightlifting and you know they don't use anabolics or anything you know any of those things um it's it's a really common injury amongst just regular people. Did you realize right away you tore something really uh, bad? Yeah, because, man, you know, you feel something like let go and you can't, your, your leg is bending, like your knee is bending and you can't stop it. Oh, so okay. You're falling, falling, falling in the pain. 
because you can feel everything go crunch, pop. Uh. Dude, as soon as I hit the ground, you know, and then you can't move your leg, you can't straighten it out. You know right away, I just did something really bad and I assumed that's what it was. And the first thing that goes through your mind is my career is over. Wow. That's it. I'm done. I'm finished. I'm fucked. I remember you you were really open with videos of everything. And I remember you posted like, you know, your, your you know, I think right after the surgery. So did you did you go into surgery right away? How long did it take? So uh, I think five days after um, I, I went into surgery because you know, I didn't just want to go to the emergency. You know, it, it's not like you're bleeding or anything. So it's not like you need immediate medical attention. It's just that the tendon is not connected. So I said, okay, hold on. Let me take some time. Let me try to find, you know, someone who's a reputable surgeon. You know, I, I, I would want to try to get it done as well as possible. Right. Um, so I did. So it was about five days to a week later, but man, you know, their recovery is really, really difficult. And maybe mm. some guys do better with it. And it depends on the surgery, depends on the person. Um, but man, it was a really, really shitty injury to go yeah. through. How long were you not able to basically walk at all? So for six weeks, you have to keep the leg locked straight in a brace. You can't bend it. You can't put pressure on it. So after six weeks, when you begin trying to bend your knee, <laughs> Oh, Dude, then that's when the so pain sets in. It's so painful. Wow. What's his name? Um, I think he had both both legs. Jean-Pierre? No, not, yeah, him, him too. But uh, I think Zach from England. Oh, Zach Khan. Yeah. Can you imagine having both legs? At well, dude, uh, I, I was saying that to myself after. I'm like, if, if this had happened in the gym, like say, you know, you're squatting, in one knee let's go all the all the tension is going to go on to the other one that one's probably going to let go too yeah yeah and now man you know when i had mine i still had one good leg so you know you're going around on crutches things like that both mm. dude you'd be running now, now in the wheelchair totally out of it. yeah you're fucked in the wheelchair with both legs straight up dude not that 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 must be even that much more terrible yeah so did you tell yourself this is it I'm done. Yeah, I mean, that's the first thing that went through my mind. But then, you know how it is pretty soon. It's like competing, you know. You get beat up or, you know, you don't do well. And, you know, you enter a negative state. And then the next morning, you're like, okay, I'm going back for more. Yeah. Yeah. So so um, when did you start training again after, after the injury? How long? I mean, I was back in the gym, you know, uh, a few months later. But what about legs? Legs. How long did that take well, for you to train legs? Like almost like normal. Normal. Probably a good year. Yeah. So right now when you look at your legs, they're both the same size again. You can't tell. Yeah, same size, but I've got something wrong in my lower back and my hip. So my lower body size is definitely down from what it was. Yeah. But, but it's even from side to side. <laughs> but you, but hey, but yeah, <laughs> but you, but you know what we say. Yeah. Once you hit the 40, that's going to happen. They say that legs and, and shoulder and delts or something, right? No, legs, legs, specifically legs. Right. Delts, delts, I held on to my delts for another 10 years. They just now recently look <laughs> like, fuck it. <laughs> but yeah, legs with 40, I realized that because I used to have a great sweep on my quads in the, in yeah. the early 2000s and then. In 2006, I guest post in, uh, where was it, in uh, Hungary. And then I went to, uh, after the guest posing, I went to the hotel. And it was October in Hungary. And, you know, it's cold. It's not crazy cold, but it was cold. So I opened the, uh, the balcony door and I laid on the bed, butt naked, and I passed out. I just wanted to just really chill a little bit, stop sweating. So I passed out, woke up a couple of hours later, and I felt pain in my lower back. So I was like, okay left the door open, and I didn't think nothing of it. And that ended up being a, a, a back injury that I had for like 11, 12 to 14 months where I couldn't train legs. I couldn't, even, I couldn't even walk right. It went from my lower back into the side, into my groin, down my leg. And nobody could figure out what it really was. 
I went. That's interesting. It's interesting you say that because currently, I've got pain in my lower back, but also a lot of pain in my groin. Yeah. So it went to my. It went. It, I was at a point where I couldn't even open my mouth. If I open my mouth wide, I would feel a sharp pain in my groin. <laughs> so oh, that's bad. It was all connected. I went to seven different doctors in four countries. Everybody said, nah, no problem, we can fix this. Nobody could even find what it was. I did MRIs, and I remember when I did the MRI, the doctor told me something like, uh, if I wouldn't see you right now, I would say this person never lifted a heavy weight in his life because everything was perfect. I went to a nerve specialist to check my nerves because I, it, it was throbbing sometimes. You know, and it was, I couldn't even lift the leg. I couldn't do anything. You know, there was good days, and then there was bad days. And then the good days were so bad that I still couldn't really walk around. And this, I couldn't do nothing. I went to, at the end, that one of the doctors told me, I said, maybe see a shrink. They thought I was making this up. You could see I was, oh, atro I was atrophied one side of my back. I was, I was limping for a year, and they thought I was making this shit up. I said, you must be out your mind. And I remember 2007, in, this, in November, I moved to, uh, to uh, Arizona, and then uh, Christmas Day, I couldn't, uh, Christmas Eve, I remember I couldn't walk. The next day I woke up and it was gone. You diet down, train hard, and supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro Tan. Son of a bitch. Like it was never there. And I didn't realize it was gone until like, I don't know, was it maybe later that day? I was like, wait a minute, I'm not even limping. Wait a minute, I'm not, I'm not even feeling it no more. And it was gone. Who's Dis gone? Disappeared, disappeared like it was never there. Holy shit. So I know, but you know, but th and that was, after that, my legs never recovered. Let me ask you, did you, did you, did your calves, did you have problems with your calves when, during that? No. No. No, no, no. It was all just in the groin, down, maybe almost halfway, not, not quite to the knee, but the groin was the worst pain. Because everything to you old, do, old. everything you do when you lift your leg, groin, when you cough, when you sneeze, groin, it was, oh man, it was terrible. And still on my back, and I, I could, you could pinpoint it, you could press on the lower back and you could find the spot. But as a doctor, they couldn't find anything. I went so far, I went to a pain management clinic where they stuck a needle the size of this through my back. They said, on the x-ray, and I said, we're gonna find the spots and we're gonna put some numbing, whatever it is, whatever they use, and if the pain disappears, then we know that's where it is. They couldn't find, right. any, couldn't find anything, it's crazy. Now, and, that, and now, now, still today, your back is fine. I'm still, yeah, my back is fine. No, let you know. Let, let, sometimes when I wake up, I got it, uh, but it's not like that 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 special pain that I had because it right. was terrible. It was terrible. Now, let me ask you this. So, I'm sure you still watch bodybuilding like it did, like it did when you were competing. <clears throat> so, when you look at bodybuilding, let's say since 2016. What do you see happen to the sport of bodybuilding when you compare it to your time or our time and the way it is right now? What do you see as, a, as an expert critic, I want to say? <clears throat> I mean, I, I guess when I see some of the physiques, I mean, I, the guys look really freaky. They look big. They look thick. But um, it, and so it's no, uh, I'm not taking anything away mm. uh, from any of them. But then somehow, I don't know, man. Like, you know, when I look at your generation, you know, when you were competing in the late 90s, early 2000s, I mean, I look at that generation of bodybuilders and I say, that generation was much better than the generation of guys I competed with. Mm. And then when I look at my generation, I kind of say, I feel like that I kind of prefer that look over the current generation. I don't know. Yeah. It just, I don't know if if it's really that different or just, you know, I view it differently. Um, what do you, what do you think? I, it's hard for me because I, I, I mean, I definitely say one thing for sure that when you, uh, when you got ready for shows back in, in our time or my time, 
you could know, you know that all your competitors, they can all be in shape. That's not something that you're like, ah, you know, I ain't got to worry about him because he's not going to be off. He's going to be off. He's going to be off. And he might be off. Right. His track record is not good. That wasn't the case back then. Everybody right. was in shape, at least the top 10. Right. You know? So it was, I would say, I'm not saying we don't see this today. You'll see this on a few guys. But it's not like a thing that's normal, common. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah. You know? So I, I think some of the guys are so so set on being big as big as possible and they forget that they forget that when you really peeled and separated you create an illusion you look 20 pounds heavier than you really are I, I, because you know when you look at the guys in the late 90s and early 2000s and you hear what they weighed yeah you know what the weight they would compete at and then you hear the weight that some of the guys are competing at today and say, well, the guys today are a lot heavier, but they don't look bigger or better. They, exactly. They don't look as big as some of these guys back in the days, yeah. I think that some of the guys back in the day, just overall, they looked more impressive. And it, 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 I, I don't even know how to articulate it uh -huh. because the guys today, you know, they come in and they, they got no fat on their glutes, right? They're in shape, okay? They're, mm -hmm. they're in shape. But somehow... The guys back then looked more impressive. They even looked harder. The, cra even the crazy detail, the striations in the shoulders, the striations yeah. are gone. Right. Really, yeah, I don't know how you have shredded glutes, but no striations. Well, you mean like striations in the shoulders then? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, probably, you know, because this was my opinion, and I, I might be wrong. I don't think I am, but I might be. <laughs> I think that's just too much scar tissue. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you if you blast everything and, and, and you create too much scar tissue, this, the striations are gone. Same in the glutes. You see the glutes, you look at the top, there's no striations no more. You see, you know, so it's it's it I don't I'm not saying it's because they you know, they did it back in the days too, but maybe it was just not as much. I, I think that the guys back then were a little, the, the physiques looked a little cleaner. Yeah. But no less small. Yeah. And, they, and they looked, I don't know, I guess in totality, just more impressive and better. Yeah. Um, and it's not anything against the current crop of guys. And if I were to come out of retirement and compete, I'm sure yeah. I'd get my ass kicked. No. You well, well, you never know. Um, but I, I see what you're saying. And, and I say the same thing. Because if guys, let's say Flex Wheeler at his prime, in his prime, Kevin Lerone in his prime, Sean Ray in his prime. Um, if they would come back now, where would they place? I mean, I think they would do significantly better, but I don't know. Maybe I'm yeah. wrong. But I, I don't I, think I would. Yeah, I, I, I think this would be not this, but this shows you that you can't discredit people from 20 years ago because they would still do well today. You no, know? And, and I would never be one of those people you know, who comes out and says, oh, the guys today suck, you know, be because... No they, don't. Part... no, they don't. They don't suck at all. It's just... Because, you know, I, I remember competing at the Nationals, you know, in 2007 when I was coming up, and, you know, you would hear guys who were from the generation before me, and the, all they could say was how much better the guys were in their generation, and the guys today suck. So I would never talk that way. No. Um not only because I think it's rude, but I, I think it's inaccurate. But there's, I don't know. There's, it, it's different. It's there's different there's still sure. a lot of guys that stand out when it comes to condition. Hardy Chopin, oh, yeah. in my eyes, is one of them who really stands out. Because who, it is it? Hardy Chopin from uh, from oh, uh, from Iran. Incredible, yeah. But this is something that you wouldn't stand out like this 15 years ago. So that shows you because how can someone stand out? And on, let's say on an Olympia lineup, stand out to the point where you think, oh, how do you see the condition? So this, I would like to see the top 10 in the same condition. Right. You know? So, and, and, and let's talk about the Arnold real quick, because the Arnold is coming up um, sat, this sat Friday and Saturday. I don't know if you know about the lineup. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. So, do you ever heard of Brett Wilkin? Because he's someone who impressed me so much 
because of the condition that he brought to the show. Great in a great balanced physique, you know, good thickness, great proportions, brings the condition. I think he looks fantastic. Mm, yeah. You you saw that there was five pullouts out of the Arnold? I know Cedric pulled out. I yeah, he was the last him. one. He was the last one that pulled out. There was four um, before him. There was Rafael Brandao pulled out, Mohamed Shaban pulled out, Nathan Diastro pulled out, and uh, Akeem Williams pulled out. For what reasons? Well, Mohamed Shaban had some neck issue. Okay. Rafael Brandao, I'm not sure. Um, Akeem Williams, I'm, I don't know, but I thought it was COVID. Okay. I thought that's what I heard, but it's something. And then uh, Cedric, you know, and he, right, made, right. he made a statement. He said he's had some issues with the stomach. Digest, right, right. digest and can't keep the food down, you right. know. And I think for, it's it's going to be hard for Cedric now because that was the second show that he pulled out. Yeah, we talked a little bit, and you know, he had mentioned he was having some difficulty. It's too bad, man, because yeah. he really, you know, great physique. But it's one of the best physiques out there in the last ten years. You know, he's just he was just well, if he nails it, everybody said the same. He's going to win the Olympia, you know. But he's also, Cedric is in his 40s, you know, and I don't know, and, I, and I, I really love his physique, and I always said it, but I also say something that I see when I see something, you know, I critique something, you know, and I can see now that, you know, I, I, it, I, it's probably because after the, uh, the issue he had when he was in the hospital, I think since then, he never really came back to where he was size-wise. Because right now, when I look at his pre-contest uh, pictures or updates that he posted, I could see his legs. What we just mm. talked about, you could see it in Cedric. Because Cedric used to have really nice, for his height, really nice full, full, full quads. Legs, yeah. And now you can see it's not there anymore, you know? So, and, and, and that's why I say, you know, once you get 40 and over, you know, sometimes you can hang on, but it's going to get you eventually. If there's anything that will stop you from working out for more than a month... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hard to recover. It's really hard to recover. So give me a prediction for the for the Arnold real quick. And I know it's gonna well, air, I mean, it's probably gonna air after the Arnold, but still, you know, just so we I know. Mean, not only out of respect because he is the deserving front runner, but I've seen some pictures and he looks incredible. Obviously, Brandon Curry. Yeah. Um, I, I would say the obvious favorite to win. Mm -hmm. Um. I think Brett Wilkins going to do really, really well. Yeah, really well. Yeah. Um, who, who, who else? Who we else got we got Brett Wilkins. We got uh, William Bonac. We got Justin Rodriguez, Regan Grimes, Samson Dowda. Um, who am I missing right now? We got one guy from the from, from Brazil. Another guy who won the amateur Arnold like two years ago. And he's qualified to do the the pros, and I think Steve that, and Steve Kuklo, yes, <clears throat> and that's I mean, it. Think, that's it. That's the whole lineup now. That's a small lineup. I, I mean, I think with with Brandon being the obvious favorite, then I think I think Brett is definitely in contention for second, third. Uh, you know, S Steve Kuklo. You know, he when he comes in really in shape, he's a big guy. Yeah. Um, he you know he could be in that top three mix. Um, Justin Rodriguez is one of my dark horses. Yeah, you know, he, he's one of those guys I think he's easy to underestimate. Yeah. But every time he competes, he's always right there yeah. in the mix. Exactly. You know, very, very competitive. And um, Samson Dowd, I mean, looks well, crazy. Yeah. You know, crazy physique. Yeah. So does Reagan Grimes. So it's really, it's going to be. Oh, Reagan. Reg, Reagan Grimes. Yeah. And he's, he's another one. I think he's, I, I, I follow Milos and I follow Reagan, but Reagan, but. Um, he seems like his physique has really matured a lot. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, he's got a lot of size. He's got a lot of muscle. He could definitely be. You know, he's in that top five mix for sure. Yeah, I think even though we had five guys that pulled out and three of them who were potential top, you know, top four guys, it's still a super competitive show. Unless you know, other than you know, Brandon Curry, I think Brandon Curry it's his show to lose. I mean, think he's he really he would really have to come in all off off to not win the show so but other than that i think two to six is anybody anybody i think Could any of the guys that are still left maybe other okay i forgot max charles is also still in 
I think other than probably this guy from Brazil, I don't think I don't have high hope for him to come in and do crazy damage. And that's not because I don't think he's good enough. That's just because I, I don't know who he is. Right. I've never heard of him. I didn't even see him. So it's going to be hard. And uh, but let's say other than that, everybody that's in the lineup has a possible has a chance to play second, third, fourth, or whatever. To be honest, I mean William. I mean some of the placings that he's had when he is on, hmm. on, he's dangerous. Yeah, you know he's he's easy to overlook because he's a smaller guy, um, even though he's not. Right. Because when that dude's in shape and he's bringing, he brings the thickness too. Yeah. And he and he said I talked to him and he said he's back to where he was. His legs, especially his legs. Yeah. I can't wait because I'm 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 broadcasting together with Fuat. We we sitting there. We're sitting right in the in the front seat watching these guys, and I can't wait. Oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be you and Fuat. Yes, yes. We oh, me Fuat and uh, Janet Janet Layuk, a, a former B a bikini yeah. Miss Olympia. Yeah, because we, we we gotta have a female with us because we don't know much about the females, you know. I can go. Right. I said, yeah, she's got a nice smile, you know. She's got a nice booty, but what am I judging here? You know what I'm saying? I gotta I gotta I gotta keep it real. I said I I can well, tell you, you I like about females. You know about females. I know, but I don't know about how to judge. I don't. I couldn't judge a bikini no, I, show I or a fitness fitness. What do I know about fitness? You know, I can yeah. tell you she looked good. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, I, I'll let you go back to work, man. I really appreciate you making the time, man. I know it's not easy because I saw somebody walking behind you. No, no, no. Thank okay. you, brother. I appreciate it, man. And uh, I'm looking forward. And hopefully, I really hope that everything works out for you, for you to make a comeback because that's something that, like, a lot of people probably want to see. So, uh, I appreciate Dennis. And, and thank you for expect my me. call regarding some advice, financial advice. Absolutely, we should talk. All right, brother. Take care, my man. God bless you, man. Stay safe, okay? Thank you. God All bless. Right. Peace out. Peace out.